So I'm making my first template for the first stringer and I have a conundrum. I don't know how high I want the floor. Um, I know how high the original floor was because before I pulled it out I put a straight edge across the top of the boat and I measured down. So down from that straight edge to that red chalk line is original and same back here I had another mark. So that chalk line is the height of the original floor and I've been planning to make that the height of the stringers which would make the floor probably an inch and a half higher than it used to be. Um, you know lower is better because you lower the center of gravity but I'm not gaining much by making it lower. H higher is better because the water will drain out the back of the boat a little better. Um, it's a, everything's a compromise and I've never seen the boat in the water. I don't know how it floats so the worst thing that could happen would be the water would pond on the floor in the front of the boat and would not go to the back. That would be the absolute worst thing that could happen. So what I'm thinking about doing is just raising that front a little bit and gaining maybe an inch higher than a projected line would normally be. Now see there was no floor in the front because it had that little cutty cabin up there so this is all new territory. Um, but I know back in the back the chalk line, the original floor, right now is uh, quite a bit higher than the two scupper holes that drain the back deck. Um, I think my plan to make the stringers the height of the old floor and maybe kick the front up a little bit and then the new floor will be about three quarters of an inch above the top of the stringer if I use three quarter material. So, um, this is a tough decision here because once I make it, I'm done. But I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to go with the... Uh, I think my plan will be to make the stringer in the back as high as the original floor. And that will make the, the new floor about an inch higher almost. And up front, I think I'll pick this chalk line up maybe a quarter, maybe a half. Which by the time you project it all the way to the front of the boat will make the floor up there maybe two inches higher than the floor in the back. But... That's all based on how the boat's sitting in the cradle. I don't know how it'll sit in the water. Um, man. I think the boat's going to be lighter than it was originally. I know the, the one single engine I'm going to put back there doesn't weigh as much as the two 90s that came on the boat. Although it'll be on a motor bracket so it'll be sticking out further back. So we'll get a little complication there. But i got to go with something. So... Uh, yeah, I might raise this a quarter in the back and raise it a half in the front and go with it. So I drove to New Orleans this morning and got four sheets of Divinacel, which is the primo product for making stringers. I got my template laid on it. I added a quarter inch to the very back and I added a half inch to the front and I marked it. And I got to figure out how to cut this stuff. It looks like I could almost cut it with a knife. We'll see. So I cut my first two pieces of the Venicel. And they're identical. And with just a little shaving and uh, fritzing, they went in there just right. I checked my dimensions down from the um, cap rail. And we're good. And I put a four foot level across the two. And we're good. So I'm doing a dry clamping mock-up this is going to be kind of tricky because I've got to put um, polyester on the existing fiberglass and I have to bed in some chop mat and then I have to put polyester on the divinacell and then I have to put thickened polyester in the bottom and then I have to get it all clamped before it sets off so I'm kind of like nervous about this but this clamp with the 2x4 on one side is not working because the um, this clamping system is not working because the, the glass is still loose between the clamps. So I'm going to take out the 2x4s and cut some plywood so I'll have 3 quarters of an inch on both sides and try that. i got to get it right before I start because this is a, a big deal if I get it wrong. 
Okay, everything's fitting good. I got a good clamping system. I had to add these struts because it wasn't standing up vertically. It wanted to lean in toward the middle of the boat. I'm good to go, but I'm not going to apply polyester resin today. It's just too freaking hot. Heat index over 100. I'm going to uh, get some ice and put it in the ice chest and cool it down and go for this first thing in the morning. This is like the biggest two glues I have to do, and I don't have a learning curve, so I'm being kind of careful. I'm going to spend the rest of the day cutting the and fitting the next two pieces of the Divinacil. Put the next piece cut to length and set in place so the top is roughly parallel with this uh, long one back here. And it is ten and a half inches off the bottom where it needs to go. So I cut a ten and a half inch stick and just made a bunch of marks coming up the slope. I'm going to go cut it, bring it back and give it a try. So we've got an acceptable fit on the bottom and for the top. <clears throat> So for the top, I just took this aluminum straight edge and extrapolated this line out toward the front. So I got a pattern for that side and I'm going to cut a mirror image for the other side. Should be close. So it's early Saturday morning and I think I have everything ready to do my first major glue up. There's a lot to do and this stuff sets pretty quickly so I want to do it early. I've got the uh, resin and ice water. I think I've got everything ready. Um, so it's going to be a, a nervous one hour from daybreak. So my goal here is to get plenty of resin between the new foam core and the existing stringer. Um, I want to make sure I have good contact and no big voids. So I could have done that by thickening the resin with a thickener and troweling it on there but that wouldn't have given me any more strength and these existing stringers are so thin I'm almost positive they're made of one layer of CSM chop strand mat and one layer of 24 ounce woven roven that's it and they're pretty brittle there's a lot of break so I want to add strength where I can um, so I instead of using the thickened resin to bond these two together I'm putting a layer of CSM chop strand mat um, chop strand mat will add some strength it's not the strongest fabric around but it does add some strength and it also holds a lot of resin so I'm using that to make sure that both surfaces are totally wetted out now the existing stringer I sanded and put some resin on it yesterday I'm going to put some more on it in a second. Um, the Divinacel I also put resin on yesterday and it soaks up a lot. So I'm putting a lot more resin on it today. And I'm wetting out this stringer. I put some resin down in the crack. And I'm going to put some thickened resin in it there in a minute and you'll see it. So <clears throat> I'm just uh, more nervous than normal. I'm worried about getting this thing halfway on there and having this resin kick and I just have a terrible mess. But turned out not to be a problem. I put such a little bit of hardener that I was almost scared later on that it wasn't going to set because it wasn't setting and it took like two hours for it to set which is real unusual. Here everything's wetted out really well and I used up the rest just poured it on top of the, uh, the Venicel. Can't hardly have too much resin at this stage of the game because the extra is going to squeeze out. So then I had pre-mixed some um, resin with a thickener. I used polyfiber earlier just to save time. All I had to do was add the catalyst and stir it. And I troweled it into the bottom of the joint, the groove, because the bottom of that groove is really lumpy. So I know my fit is just kind of marginal down in there. But I put enough thickened uh, resin, hopefully, to fill up any spots or grooves. <coughs> and then I put the Divinacel into position and tapped it down. I had some marks on the back so I know where it needed to go and tapped it down until it was in the right spot or very close to it and started putting my clamps and um, I have first of all I pushed the um, stringer to the outside of the boat because I had a tendency to want to lean in. I used the little sticks to do that um, and then started putting the clamps and what you can't see is I have plywood on the backside of the uh, stringer also so I'm clamping 
the um, foam to the existing stringer with plywood on both sides and lots of little wedges and um, pretty happy with the way the whole thing turned out. I'm going to do the other one tomorrow morning while it's cool and after this everything gets on a smaller scale. This is by far the largest single clamping that I'm going to have to do. Um, after this it's just a lot of um, installing resin and um, mat for at least for the stringer stage. Well I'm not going to lie I did get a little nervous. I, uh, I put very very little hardener in it this morning because of my panic about not getting it all together before it starts getting hard. And three hours later it was still sticky. But now that the afternoon has rolled around and it got really hot it's not sticky anymore. We got it. Hopefully I'm going to get set up to do the other side. Come out here tomorrow morning early. And do the same thing to the other side. Ow. That's what I'm talking about. Nice and straight. I would coming off the back. beautiful. So I hope my camera's working right. It was messing up the other day. But anyway, I just glued my fourth uh, Divinicel section and now I need to come over here on this second stringer and open it up. I'll cut the top off and then I'll cut it about an inch above the floor and get the interior of the FRP, the laminate, off. And I'll have to cut back that little bulkhead a little bit. And I don't have enough resin or laminate on hand to start laminating the outside of these. I wish I did. But I do have enough to set probably two more pieces of the Venicel. So we get this side uh, cleaned up, cut up, and ready to go. Well, thanks to a comment by a viewer, I am now woke to the fact that I should have been using my diamond wheel on the grinder instead of the abrasive wheels and I had two of them already I just wasn't using them and so I haven't broken any wheels since I made that dramatic shift and I've also been using my uh, multi-master tool for getting up in the corners I've been watching YouTube videos of people doing this for a long time and I've never tried it but it actually works pretty good it's not fast but it'll get all the little bitty spots that the grinder won't get into and just save you a lot of, a lot of work So, 20 minutes, that's all it took. This went pretty well, I'm getting better at this. Um, I've got the glass cut out the way, so all I need to do is dig out the muck and sand that inside surface of that existing glass. And I'm basically ready to fit and glue in new uh, Divinicel stringer core. But my clamps are tied up right now, but should be able to get one glued maybe this afternoon sometime. So now that these two main stringers are glued in place and will never move, I tweaked the top a little bit with the belt sander and I've got them perfectly level with each other. And then I cut the bottom of this new stringer um, in a slight arc so it would fit, fit down into the glass. And I just slid the level over and give myself a mark um, three times and I need to take it out and go cut it. And it should line up with the top of these and then I'll do the same for this side. Just did the last two installations of the uh, stringers into the boat and gluing them to the existing stringer fiberglass. Um, it's been going pretty good. The first one I was real nervous. The second one I was a little better, but I kind of got a routine now. And uh, we're going with it. Now these little gray foam pads I happen to have. My tenant in my little rental building deals with insulated glass. 
And these things, insulated glass comes wrapped with these and he throws them away and I always have a few of them laying around. And they're awesome for this because that stuff is real itchy so when I lean on it with my forearms, um, it keeps me from tearing up my forearms. It also protects the edge of the uh, Divina cell a little bit because it's not super strong yet. It doesn't have any glass on it. In a perfect world, I would have glassed, fully glassed both sides of both of these stringers so they would act like a beam and the glass would not be interrupted by the bulkheads. But I don't live in a perfect world. I live in Barry Luke's world and I don't have enough glass on hand and I didn't want to stop forward progress so I just glassed the spots where the bulkheads were going to hit and later on when my two rolls of glass come in the mail I will finish glassing both sides of the stringers so the stringers are looking good and now we're going to start with the little bulkheads thanks for watching